as x gets larger and larger, what happens to this whole quantity here? So see if you can guess. You probably can guess. As x gets larger and larger, what do you think happens? Okay, if you guess that it, the whole thing is going to get smaller and smaller, you're right. And the reason is, is because, see how this denominator's highest degree term, see the x squared? This is growing at a faster rate than this numerator's highest degree term. Okay, this is only x to the first, this is x squared. So as x gets larger and larger, as it approaches infinity, this is going to outpace, it's going to grow at a much faster rate. This whole quantity is going to get smaller, smaller, smaller. It's going to approach zero. It's kind of like, say for example, you know, you're making pizzas, but more and more people keep showing up at a faster and faster pace than you can keep up with making the pizzas. Eventually, you're going to have to keep cutting those slices smaller and smaller to feed everybody, right? So that's kind of a funny example. But the other way to do this is you could pick a number like, say like 10. You put 10 in here, see what you get. Put a thousand in for x and see what you get. Put a million in for x and you're going to see it's going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, now what I'm showing you here is kind of an intuitive way of doing the problem, okay? But a more rigorous way of doing it is look at whatever the highest degree term is. In this case, it's x squared, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x squared. Okay, anything divided by itself is 1, so it's not going to change the value of this fraction. But what we're going to do is we're going to distribute okay, to the numerator and denominator. And so look at what we got. We get 2x divided by x squared plus 3 divided by x squared all over x squared divided by x squared plus 4 divided by x squared. Okay, now if we simplify this further, you can see one of these x's cancels up with one of these. Okay, so we have 2 over x plus 3 over x squared Okay, and then x squared divided by x squared is 1, and we have 4 over x squared. Okay, now keep in mind we're doing the limit as x approaches infinity, but notice what happens. So when the numerator is a constant, okay, and the denominator has a variable, okay, and it's raised to a positive exponent, like we have here, x to the first, x squared, x squared. As x gets larger and larger, because the numerator is staying constant, it's going to get smaller and smaller. It's going to approach zero. So I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to say zero, zero, zero. So what we have is zero divided by one. Zero divided by one is zero. So the limit of this whole quantity is just going to be zero as x approaches infinity. So you're with me so far? All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's take the intuitive approach first. So this one, what do you think the limit is as x gets larger and larger? So take a second. What do you think, what do you think happens there? Okay, if you guessed that it's 5 thirds, you're right, okay? And let's see how we came about that. See, as x gets larger and larger, does seven change? Does four change? No, those are constants, they stay the same, right? So what happens is if x is a thousand, you know, you're just taking away seven. If x is a million, you're just taking away seven. So this term here is far outpacing this constant. The constant doesn't change like that. So we can essentially ignore that because as x is larger and larger, it's like if I told you I'm going to give you a million dollars times five, but then I said, okay, but you have to give me back seven dollars, see, minus seven, you'd say, oh, you know, it's, it's no big deal, right? It's still approximately five million dollars, right? Okay, so same thing here, okay? If I give you three million dollars, right, three times a million, and then I say, oh, I forgot to give you four more, you'd say, oh, don't worry about it, because three million, three million four, it's about the same, right? So we're zeroing in on this quantity right here. Notice that the x's, they're going to cancel one another out. So this is just going to be five thirds. So that's it. Okay, now if you want to do this in a more rigorous fashion, we're going to do just like we did here. We're going to take the highest degree uh, power of x, which is x to the first, and we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominators okay, by 1 over x. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator and denominator because this is like multiplying by 1. And if I distribute it to each of these terms, what do I get? I get uh, this would just be 5, this is going to be 7 over x, this is going to be 3, and this is going to be 4 over x. But just like we talked about over here, if you have a constant in the numerator and x to a positive exponent, as x gets larger and larger, this is whole thing is going to go to, well, this quantity is going to go to 0, this quantity is going to be 0, and we're going to be just left with 5 over 3. So the limit is 5 thirds. Okay, now before we go further, you're probably thinking, 
what happens if we're going to negative infinity? So let's say instead of the limit as x approaches positive infinity, meaning as we're going to the right on the graph, we go to the left on the graph, you know, all the way to the left. Well, still for this one, you're still gonna get 5 thirds, okay? Because you can see, if this was like, these are canceling out, right? These are insignificant, right? Even if this was a negative 1 million, okay, x is getting really large negative now, and this is a negative a million, you're gonna have negative five million divided by negative three million. The two negatives are gonna cancel and you're still gonna get this ratio five thirds. Okay, so you're with me so far? Let's look at one last example. Okay, this is like the third scenario here. So this one we had the denominator's highest power term, okay, is greater than the numerator's highest power term. That went to zero, okay, that limit was zero. This one, it was a tie. Okay, so even if I change this to like x squared, or x to the 20th, okay, like this, as long as those are growing at the same rate, they have the same exponent, okay, the same highest powered terms, those are the same, you're gonna get the ratio of the coefficients in front of those highest powered terms. Now the third scenario here is where the numerator's highest agreed term, okay, that's this one here, is to a higher power than the denominator's highest powered term, okay. So what that means is that this numerator is growing at a much faster rate than the denominator, okay? So this is gonna outpace the denominator. So as x gets larger and larger, this is gonna to go to infinity or negative infinity, and it depends on these terms. So again, if you kind of follow along with me just in an intuitive sense, as x gets larger and larger, like say x is 10, 10 cubed is 1,000 times six is 6,000, 2 times 10 is only 20, so 6,000 minus 20, see this is not having very much impact you know, on the overall value of the numerator like this term is. So we can essentially, as x gets larger and larger, we can ignore these terms because you know, they're not adding very much uh, influence. Okay, So this reduces down, in essence, to 6x cubed to 3x squared, and if we reduce it down even further, we get 2x. See, so 6 divided by 3 and x cubed divided by x squared. So now you can see as x approaches infinity, this is going to go to 2 times infinity, right? It's going to go up to infinity, right, like that. Now, if x is approaching negative infinity, you're going to the left on the graph, then this would go to negative infinity, okay? Now, if I change this up a little bit, if I make this a negative, okay, then this would be like negative 2x. As x goes to, gets larger and larger, this would actually go down, down, down towards negative infinity. But if you're going to negative infinity, the two negatives would cancel and you'd actually be going up towards positive infinity. So, so in conclusion, let's just take a real quick look at the three different cases. The first case, the denominator's highest degree is greater than the numerator's. And that means it's gonna to go to zero. The second case, it's a tie between the highest power term and the numerator and the denominator. And you're gonna get the ratio of the coefficients as x approaches infinity. And then the last case is where the numerator's highest degree term, okay, is higher than the denominator's highest uh, degree term. And that's gonna either go to positive infinity or negative infinity. And the way you can tell that is by looking at the two highest powered terms in the numerator and denominator, like this one and this one. And if you look at the coefficients, if they're both positive, it's gonna go to positive infinity. If they're both negative, okay, it's also gonna go to positive infinity because they cancel. But if one's positive, one's negative, then it'll go to negative infinity. Now, if the limit is x is approaching negative infinity, Okay, then you'd have to analyze it a little bit further. So like for this one, it would be, this reduces down to two x. Okay, so if x is approaching negative infinity, this is gonna be negative infinity. So you can kind of look at those two highest degree terms and then reduce it down and analyze it from there. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, feel free to send me a comment uh, if you have any suggestions or if you're enjoying these videos, I always enjoy uh, seeing those comments and I'll talk to you in the next video.